I have shared my review of the Nikon D500, my body tour of it, plus a few other videos and a number of photo shoots done with the D500. I also shared an overview of the menus. Now we're walking through each menu section in detail. Today we will go through the movie shooting menu. Anytime you want to jump to a different D500 video, I've created a playlist on my YouTube channel. You can get to that playlist at the link above. Plus, there's one more special treat for those of you who support my site or would like to, either as a patron through Patreon or for VIP members of snapcheck.com. I've created a special video called My Personal D500 Menu and Body Settings. In that video, I'll show you how I've put together my hand-fixed settings into a configuration for the D500 that is ready to go for many different types of shooting. Links to that video on snapcheck.com and on Patreon are in the description of this video below. Now let's get into the movie shooting menu. This menu is similar to the photo shooting menu, except for shooting video. Here we will adjust the shooting options for video, like where the videos are recorded or how the files get named. The movie shooting menu is the third menu down the left side of the screen. Your first option is reset movie shooting menu. Here you can reset this entire menu to the default settings. Next is file naming. The default is for the file to start with DSC, then underscore, then four numbers. You can change the letters here if you wish though. Destination is where you choose on which memory card your movies are recorded. You can see the amount of time available on each card here too. Choose image area is next. This is where you choose how much of the sensor you utilize and you have two options, DX, which is 1.5X or 1.3X. Next is frame size and frame rate. Lots of options here, ranging from 4K at 30 frames per second, or 25 frames per second, or 24 frames per second, to 1080p at 60, 50, 30, 25, or 24 frames per second, and then 720p at 60 or 50 frames per second. A note here is that the maximum amount of time for a video is 30 minutes, but it will be broken down into multiple files as it records. Then we have movie quality, where you can choose high or normal, though if you're shooting in 4K, you are automatically in high quality. In ISO sensitivity settings, you can set the ISO sensitivity from a list when you're shooting movies in manual. You also have auto ISO control for when you are in manual mode. This is where you can have the camera decide which ISO sensitivity is best for your given situation. You choose on or off, then you can also set the maximum ISO sensitivity meaning the camera won't use anything higher. A note here is that the camera will choose ISO for you in P, A, or S modes. And you can also change the ISO sensitivity manually with the ISO button on the top of the camera and the rear command dial. Or you can turn on or off the auto ISO using the ISO button on the top of the camera and the front command dial. In white balance, you have many choices along with some fine tuning for some of them. First, you can choose to use the same white balance as your still photos. Then you have auto, where the camera will try to figure out what color temperature to use. Within auto, you have three options for fine tuning. Keep white, which reduces warm colors. Normal, and keep warm lighting colors. Your next option is incandescent, for when you are in incandescent lighting. Next is fluorescent, which has a bunch of subsettings for the type of fluorescent bulbs. Sodium vapor lamps, warm white fluorescent, white fluorescent, cool white fluorescent, day white fluorescent, daylight fluorescent, and high temperature mercury vapor. Then there's direct sunlight and cloudy and shade. Now for each of these that I've shown you so far, you can press the right arrow on the multi-selector and fine tune on this chart. Then there's K for Kelvin, where you can choose a specific color temperature number, then adjust it on this green to magenta scale. Last, there's preset manual, which you can set in two ways. You can take a photo of a neutral gray or white object, like a gray card, and set the white balance off of that, or you can copy the white balance from an existing photo on your memory card. You can have six presets stored here. You can also change white balance on the top of the camera with the white balance button and the command dials. Pressing the white balance button and turning the rear command dial, you cycle through the white balance options on the command screen but when you have additional options in the white balance setting, like fluorescent, you turn the front command dial to change those sub options. The next option in this menu is set picture control, which controls how the sharpness, contrast, brightness, saturation, and hue are rendered in the video. You can choose to use the same picture control as you have set for still photography, or you can choose standard, neutral, vivid, monochrome, portrait, 
landscape, or flat. Within these, there are even fine tuning options. Standard is the default setting because it's good in most situations. And here are your fine tuning options. You can adjust one, or there is a quick adjust that will change all of these at once. If you do make any modifications to these, an asterisk will appear next to the picture control name in the list. In neutral, the camera will do a little processing and will provide natural looking results. This is ideal for use when you plan to do a lot in editing. You have the same fine tuning options here. Vivid will do what the title suggests and intensify primary colors. And again, you have the same fine tuning options. In monochrome, your video will be recorded in black and white. In fine tuning here, you have sharpening, contrast, brightness, filter effects, yellow, orange, red, and green, and toning like sepia or cyanotype. Next is portrait, which focuses on skin tones and you have the same fine tuning options as the other color options. Landscape focuses on colors that will give you intense landscapes and cityscapes. You've got the same fine tuning options here. In flat, details are preserved across the tone range. This is intended for use when you plan to do a lot of work on the image and post-processing. And then you have the same fine tuning options here as well. One last thing is that you can get right to this menu by pressing the key button on the back of the camera when you are in live view movie shooting. The next option is manage picture control. In save edit, you can choose from your existing picture controls, edit it using the fine tuning options we talked about before and save it. Or under load save, you can bring in new picture controls that are saved on the memory card. This section is handy if you set up a custom picture control on one camera and you want to put it on your other cameras. Also, when you have custom picture controls, rename and delete will become available. Active delighting is where the camera helps preserve detail in highlights and shadows. You can use the same setting as you do for still photography, or you can choose from a range of extra high to low or even off. Next is high ISO noise reduction, where photos taken at high ISO sensitivities will be processed to reduce the amount of noise. Here you have high, normal, low, and off. Flicker reduction will reduce flicker and banding when you are shooting under fluorescent or mercury vapor lighting during live view or movie recording. You have the choice to allow the camera to choose the correct frequency, or you can choose 50 or 60 Hertz, whichever matches the local power supply. In micro sensitivity, you can choose how sensitive the microphone is or turn it off entirely. There's even a choice to allow the camera to choose sensitivity. Frequency response has two options, wide range and vocal range. In wide range, the microphone will respond to a wide range of frequencies, while vocal range will bring out human voices. That brings us to wind noise reduction. If you turn this on, the low cut filter will help reduce wind noise. This will not affect any external microphones that you attach though. Time-lapse movie is where the D500 will take photos at intervals to create a silent time-lapse movie. And you can choose the interval between shots, the total shooting time, and if you want exposure smoothing on or off. This will smooth out abrupt changes in exposure, except when you're in manual mode. And last in this menu is electronic VR, which is on or off. However, you cannot use this when shooting 4K, and when you are shooting in DX mode, the edges of the frame will be cropped out. That is the movie shooting menu. Now, you can see the rest of my detailed menu walkthroughs of the D500 in the playlist to the right, plus other D500 related videos. And you can follow the Patreon link above to find out more about supporting my mission and how to see how I set up my own D500.